Welcome to the ZDNet's DIY IT Project Lab, where I'm testing 3D printers for your entertainment and edification. Today we'll be looking at the Anycubic Viper, an inexpensive yet very full-featured Bowdoin Drive filament printer. My name is David Gewertz, and you're watching ZDNet's 3D Printing Discovery Series, which is part of my DIY IT column. In addition to testing 3D printers, we also explore maker and smart home technology, stress test servers, fly drones, and regularly dive deep into advanced geekery for fun and profit. Before we get started on today's review, I'd like to remind you that this video is part of a comprehensive 3D printing and desktop fabrication discovery series. If you'd like to know when the next review is up, feel free to click the subscribe button and the little notify bell in the corner there. Today, we're assembling and testing the Viper from Anycubic. Many of you are familiar with the Anycubic name when it comes to resin printers. This is a filament printer, and Anycubic definitely demonstrates that they can extrude filament as well as they can selectively harden resin. At about $350, the Anycubic Viper checks off a bunch of FDM desirable features right out of the box. The biggest win for a printer in this price range is the automatic bed leveling feature. The Viper does mesh leveling, so you don't have to spend a few hours fighting with the adjustment wheels to get it dialed in. Add to that a filament runout sensor and a power fail resume feature. If your printer runs out of filament or the power fails in the middle of a long print, you can resume your print without losing your progress. The Anycubic has a build area of 245 by 245 by 260 millimeters. For a 3D printer, I'd put this build size right in the Goldilocks region. It's just about right. You can build reasonably sized objects, but the print surface isn't so large that heating it evenly is that much of an issue. The printer has a heated bed, and the surface is magnetically attached spring steel. The surface of the bed is stippled, which definitely helps keep the objects attached to the bed, but I'm curious how well the surface coating will stand up to heavy use. The printer comes mostly complete. All that's really necessary is attaching the gantry to the base. I did run into an issue here. You're given two bolts that attach from the bottom up into the gantry's aluminum extrusion. When I tried to tighten the screws, they seemed to strip very easily. I could not create a firm connection between the gantry extrusion and the base. To solve this problem, I ordered a set of $12 corner bracket plates with T-nuts. It took about five minutes to attach these across both the base and the gantry, and the two main sub-assemblies of the printer were securely connected. Overall, it took me about half an hour to put this together, plus a couple of days waiting for the add-on plates from Amazon. Connecting the various cables was easy because they were clearly labeled. The printer has a vertically oriented control screen, which I used for initial bed leveling. After that, I connected a Raspberry Pi via USB and did all my printing through Octoprint. Oh, and it has a silly little drawer for storing tiny tools. And with that, Let's move on to the printing. As usual, I started with Yoda. I print Yoda heads as a test print for all my FDM printers. They make great test pieces because the ears and chin show how well the printer handles overhangs. Spare Yoda head prints also make great giveaways to 3D printing curious visitors to the Fab Lab. Yoda's ears were just about perfect, as you can see using the macro lens. Overall, Yoda came out well, although there's a hint of layer separation on his back. For the record, I printed Master Yoda before I added the triangular support pieces, which might have firmed up the overall print. Next, I tried to print the Ada Linda Dragon. This is an extremely difficult model to print support-free, which is why I've started using it to test. Using the macro lens, you can see some blobbing, but examined from just a few inches away, it came out pretty much perfect on the first try. As you can see, there are a number of items that could be delicate enough to break off, but the Viper held its own. It was a long, challenging print that proved to be worry-free on the Viper. Finally, let's take a look at the Benchy. There was some stringing and a bit of blobbing, but otherwise this test print performed as expected. You can see the flexible steel bed's stipple pattern from this bottom shot of the first layer. If you expect to have a smooth first layer, you'll need a different bed material. Bridging over the front window was nice and clean. You can see a nice texture on the deck from this top view. And as we pull back focus, you can see how well defined the smokestack and the roof are. You can also see some minor retraction issues, which is probably why we're getting the little dribbles of plastic. Overall, the Benchy did well. 
There are some minor layer lines visible on the side of the hull, but nothing indicative of any printing problems. So let's wrap this up. On the positive side, the AnyCubic Viper has automatic mesh bed leveling, a filament runout sensor, and power fail resume. It has a removable steel build plate, and it produces good prints, all for about $350. On the negative side, the vertical gantry screws stripped upon installation, but the fixed was easy and inexpensive. And I'm not sure how robust the bed surface is or whether it will scrape off when removing stubborn prints. All that said, the bottom line is this. The AnyCubic Viper is a sweet machine for the price. Sure, there are better machines out there, but for the mix of features this offers, you'd be paying two to four times as much. The Viper offers a sweet spot of convenience and pro-level capabilities for just slightly above an entry-level price. If you can afford $350, I'd recommend this over less expensive printers that don't have the Viper's excellent range of capabilities. For ZDNet's DIY IT, I'm David Gewertz. Go out there and make something awesome.